ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here today as the keynote speaker at this novel event. Let me begin by congratulating the board, the management, staff, and customers of Standard Chartered as they celebrate 125 years of operation in Ghana. Well done. You will agree with me that Standard Chartered has been an integral part of Ghana's economic and financial market development since its establishment as the Bank of British West Africa in 1896. Standard Chartered has had a rich history which spans the entire length of the history of banking in Ghana. Indeed, the chronicle of Ghana's economic history would not be complete without mention of Standard Chartered as a result of the significant contribution to almost every facet of the economy. This is a testament to your brand promise, here for good. You have put your capital behind opportunities such as providing long-term financing for infrastructure development, providing sovereign solutions, and more recently, providing financing for sustainable development goals. Today, we stand at the crossroads of history, not only for Standard Chartered Fraternity, not only for the Standard Chartered Fraternity, but for, people, for the people of Ghana. I say so because Standard Chartered in collaboration with the Bank of Ghana, fintechs, and other stakeholders is providing a platform for the industry to unveil the next generation banking and future technology capabilities. This platform also gives government the opportunity to share the great strides we have made in our digitalization journey. The world over, Next to ideas and creativity, technology is becoming one of the key drivers of the productive capacity of economies. From new ways of providing services, to new job models, to production in factories, digital innovation is spearheading and expanding opportunities for growth in a way that has never been seen before. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last five years, the policy direction is to build a digital economy, a financial ecosystem, and a system that best delivers a more efficient, transparent, inclusive building block in public administration. We believe it is a more robust way to run this country and the vehicle that will accelerate the rate of growth. It is the way to make this country the hub of financial and technological progress in the sub-region. That is why we do not take this national responsibility lightly. The gains and ripple effects will be significant. It will fast track our growth and prosperity, improve public administration, revenue mobilization, tackle corruption significantly, fast track trade, reduce unemployment, and altogether leapfrog our progress. As you well know, the progress of Ghana and other economies around the world has been stalled by the COVID-19 pandemic. The shocks adversely impacted our public finances. Thankfully, as business activities are returning to normalcy, our attempts at recovery and consolidation remain firm, and we are starting to see positive results. We anticipate a projected average GDP growth of about 4.6% this year, and government intends to achieve growth in real GDP from a projected 0.9% for 2020 to an average of 5% over the medium term 2021 to 2024. As the economy rebounds, 
we ride on the upside of the pandemic. It has scaled up a necessity to pursue and utilize digital channels. We must now all put in, the, in a concerted effort and drive investments to meet this demand at the right scale. We are on the right track, and if we keep at it, we would have laid a formidable foundation for making Ghana a digital hub in the sub-region. We have put into motion several initiatives that to drive this digital economy we speak about. As I said last night, after assuming office in 2017, we set our sights on a strategic digitization process across several aspects of our society. These efforts are beginning to yield positive returns and positioning Ghana as the focal point for digitalization in the sub-region. Our principal tools or enablers for this digitalization effort were the national ID card system, the digital property addressing, the, the mobile money interoperability, and soon the central bank will add another critical enabler, which is the ECD. These are four fundamental enablers, and with them, we will engineer major innovations in many areas in the way we do things in num numerous applications, including the payment system. The Parliament of Ghana passed the Payment Systems Act of 2013, Act 662. The Act provided guidelines for the supervision of e-payments across the country. With that, we have seen the emergence of several internet and mobile solutions led by fintechs and companies. Standard Chartered SE Mobile was one of these digital platforms that was introduced early in the day. The central bank has opened its innovation wing to monitor, regulate, and drive innovation in the financial technology space. In addition, we have added digitalization to our communications ministry to strategically position the sector to ensure that it remains on government's strategic agenda. It is my expectation that this festival will add to the numerous efforts so far. Stakeholders should take full advantage of this platform to engage on how we can build up from these foundations. Our takeoff should start any moment now, but it will depend on a few critical levers. First, a strong regulatory framework will continue to be essential. This will be the spine on which our digital ecosystem is built. It is important that the central bank is consistently ahead of the curve. I have been very impressed with the regulatory oversight so far and the ongoing meticulous preparations to launch the ECD next year to promote financial inclusion. Second, investments in innovation is crucial. Banks, financial institutions, and other stakeholders should invest in digitalization and innovation. I commend Standard Charter's SC Ventures Unit for providing the platform and a catalyst to promote innovation, invest in disruptive financial technology, and explore alternative business models. It is the way to go. Just like client service, innovation must be at the very heart of our businesses. It will have impact on new products we churn out, make our customers more satisfied, and increase value to stakeholders when done right. Third and finally, collaboration will cement the ecosystem further. The digital economy thrives on information and collaboration. Banks, fintechs, telecom companies, governments, regulators, and consumers should form one big block, sharing information and feedback that loops in everyone. Collaboration will provide opportunities for entities with different specializations 
to work together to achieve bigger goals. Fundamentally, there is no inconsistency between competition and collaboration. I know that many of the stakeholders in our ecosystem, in the private sector, are very profit-driven. Um, the central bank it, the, ha, has to guard jealously the safety and stability of the system and strive to get financial inclusion. And the central bank has been driving this, as the governor said, for many, many years. But if we don't collaborate, as we are saying, then everybody would be in silos. But once we come together in one ecosystem, then we are able to derive economies of scale from that collaboration, where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So we are very focused on inclusion, and this is why it is very important that as we build these systems, we try to bring everybody on a common platform. And when you look at the way mobile money interoperability was executed, we've got everybody in this ecosystem on the same platform. Before, you had everybody working in different silos. If you couldn't even get moving money between MTN and, and Vodafone. It, that couldn't even happen. But once we brought everybody on one platform, you now have interoperability, which is actually expanding the pie for everybody. We had 35 billion in 2015 of mobile money transactions, 35 billion. Dollar, uh, Ghana CDs. Last year it was 570 billion after we've done mobile money interoperability. And next year, as the Minister of Finance said, we are looking towards a trillion of uh, CDs in transactions. But this means uh, rather than competing in our individual silos to share 35 billion, we are going to be competing in our individual uh, com com in our individual places to share a trillion Ghana cities. And that is where the collaboration does not contradict competition. We can compete and collaborate at the same time. And it's very, very important in this context. And this thinking is also behind our launch of universal QR codes. As you know, you can have QR codes for different institutions, different fintechs, different banks, but if we don't bring everybody into the same platform, the, the, the economies of scale will not be derived. And we've made a lot of progress uh, in this uh, QR code. Uh, Eben Asante is here. Uh, you know uh, I want MTN to uh, finally come on board. Uh, so I'm using this opportunity to tell you that before the end of this year, I want you fully on board the QR code. You will make money, you will still make money. The great example of this collaboration is this event. Standard Chartered is collaborating with the Bank of Ghana and Enterprise Singapore and the Monetary Authority of Singapore has brought together physically and virtually international players in the fintech ecosystem, seasoned experts and practical fintech innovators to engage and share best practices which could give birth to new solutions and ideas. I believe this festival has come to stay and will develop the likes of the Singapore Fintech Festival. I wish you all an engaging session and look forward to positive outcomes to accelerate digitalization of our economy. Thank you very much for your attention and well done, Standard Chartered.